This is Cairo from ICHET, Innovation, Change and Entrepreneurship. See you in a few minutes. I'm here with Oleg Konovala, number one influential coach in the world in the area of social media. And, and why leaders need to be visionary in the post-pandemic situation like that? The greatness of your success is much depends on the greatness of your vision. Pandemic didn't make a difference. It's revealed a difference between true leaders and managers and we are really good at finding problems and if we are looking for the problems we'll find them visionary leadership is a, it goes beyond immediacy it's about finding solutions which is very very different so visionary seal it's a gem yeah. it's a gem for for people for himself covid helped us to re, to realize this that we can't use old tools and practices to create the future. No one could build something on empty promises. Hello, Dr. Anand. Hi, hi, Kairul. How are you today? Good, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for inviting good. me. Yeah, welcome. So, uh, welcome to Ice Chat Investment Change and yeah. Entrepreneurship. So, today we have a special session with Dr. Anand from Taylor University. Let me just check my sound. Hold on, yeah? Yes, good. I can hear you. Right, so our topic today is global disruptions, uncertainties, and loss of connections. Why the world is social science, right? So I think this is a topic that's very close to many of us uh, now with the situation that we are in. So before we go there, Dr. Anin, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Cyril. Um, okay. I have been an educator and a researcher for about 20 years in the area of social sciences. I have a master's in history and a PhD in political science. Um, I started my career in my country, India, and then came to Malaysia on a fellowship uh, funded by the Ford Foundation and uh, served as a visiting fellow at University Kebangsaan, Malaysia, and then at the Institute of Strategic and International Studies, also known as ISIS, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And after that, I worked in two leading private universities, uh, currently almost nine years. Uh, Head of School, School of Liberal Arts and Sciences at uh, Taylor's University. And um, my main research interest is to study social change and development through oral histories of communities, um, trying to understand how communities tell their own stories in their own words 
about their past and their journeys into the future and this desire to do field work based research has taken me to uh, different countries like uh, uh, India of course and Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and more recently in Malaysia where I'm trying to understand uh, you know on, on uh, pretty much all over Asia who are experiencing political violence, international displacement and rapid urbanization. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, you seem to be uh, what you call well uh, experienced uh, in, in, in the education and you've been around Malaysia for nine years. Um, no, uh, <laughs> almost double that time. <laughs> almost double the time and with Taylor's yeah. for nine years. With Taylor's in nine years, but I first wow. came to Malaysia as a visiting fellow in UKM, mm. I think around 2002. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, that's amazing. So, Dr. Anit, uh, okay, educators tell us about what is social science and why is it important? Okay, I'll try mm. to keep it short. <laughs> so, there are various definitions of social science and a short one would be uh, a scholarly study of human society and social relationship. Yeah. So, in other words, social sciences examine what it means to be a social being ranging from, you know, intricacies of human behavior and brain uh, to large-scale social movements, demographic, economic, politics, etc. And uh, social sciences broadly include um, anthropology, economics, human geography, law, political science, international relations, psychology, social policy, sociology, etc. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why, why is it important to us now? Okay. Yeah, Kairul, I think that's a key question and I love the fact that you put the word now, you know. Because I think yeah. more than ever, now really is, uh, is the role of social scientists is becoming more and more uh, important. And I believe that the role of social scientists now is to prepare mm -hmm. people and communities to deal with huge and sharp disruptions that we are facing mm -hmm. and will continue to face for longer than you, know, you and I or anybody else can imagine. Now, let me give you just yeah. one example to start with. Yeah? Yeah. A recent study by McKinsey Global Institute of 88 occupations in 50 countries has shown that 800 million jobs or 20% of the global workforce could be lost by robotics, uh, lost mm. to robotics uh, by 2030. Now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's interesting that uh, the study says that, you know, well-paying jobs that provided middle-class employment for humans are becoming the province of machines. Okay? This is mm -hmm. what the study says. So now, mm -hmm. uh, looking at this scenario, you and I know that some of some of us will be able to retool, pick up new skills for ourselves, find new jobs. Yeah. But many senior workers, women, single parents, uh, maybe less skilled people without, uh, you know, a university degree or a professional education, even geographically immobile people. You know, people for some reason they cannot live a certain geographical area. They will find right. it increasingly difficult to find new sources of income. So this is where mm. social scientists would come in. Social scientists need to study how mm. do we balance the needs of economic growth and investment on one hand. Now those are, mm. you know, very big realities. Mm. Uh, but on the other hand, how, so how do we balance the needs of economic growth and investment on the one hand, mm -hmm. and the loss of livelihoods on the other, because of yeah. the wealth funds, yeah. We also yeah, need but to yeah, yeah. Just, just want to stop with that. See, I, I like the part where you mentioned about all this new um, technology coming in, uh, employment being replaced, right? Why, why? Do, I mean, why do you think that the technology always get more priority than the human side of things? Uh, now, particularly now we have this public health issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Should it be uh, more emphasis being put on the people livelihood instead of uh, you know, purchasing or procure more technology, you know, for organization and you know, and uh, these employment issues. Yeah, of course. I think the key word here is also to be to be able to um, uh, balance, you know. And technology mm. is here to stay, you know. And mm. uh, I think the key thing is uh, how we can make the technology work for us as human beings, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you an example. For example, look at how many sections of Malaysians took advantage of the t of technology to stay connected during the pandemic, you know. We worked, we taught, uh, we even married, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we had online yeah. marriages and students completed yeah. the semester. We celebrated birthdays and festivals along with our loved ones from different parts of the world through Zoom, Skype and so on. Right. 
so in some ways technology also helped us to stay more human uh, during this time but i'm not trivializing the other side of technology that presents a challenge to you know job relationships and so on so which is why mm. we as social scientists need to go beyond the economics of technology and gauge its impact mm. on humans and find new ways of dealing with mm. challenges so humans must use technology not the other way around right right okay i mean uh, you your your point is about the social scientists need to do a bit of research uh, or studies about this right so other than doing research and studies what else the social scientists could contribute more or what some of the jobs that you could say that uh, you know contribute directly to the economy for social scientists uh, background social science background thank you kairil i i love that question and right. uh, Uh, I think it's really the the time to talk about this, you know. So mm-hmm. let me give you a, a very a very interesting example in in what ways can social scientists really uh, lead to the change, you know, as we come mm-hmm. out of this uh, this pandemic. Now, even before COVID nineteen pandemic, there were you know outbreaks of uh, infectious diseases or other types of diseases, you know, like Ebola, measles, plague. Mm-hmm. Even we had mm-hmm. you know uh, HIV AIDS and so on and Yeah. And a lot of these uh, diseases, you know, the the understanding of those diseases are intertwined with rumors, uh, scapegoating of certain peoples or communities. There's also political, mm-hmm. economic stability, uh, mm-hmm. instability, changing eco- uh, ecological conditions. You know, so many things uh, happen as a part of those diseases. While uh, the medical side of those, uh, you know, the, uh, dealing with those diseases are very very important, but that. Mm. the challenge in addressing these health security issues currently surpasses conventional response uh, strategies now this is mm. the, the point that I, i really want to make i wrote is that that mm. development and coordination of social science expertise is needed to maximize mm. the impact of public health initiatives against these dreaded diseases mm. because training in the social sciences can help you to understand help one to understand better the social cultural determinants of health and to come up with more effective public health intervention programs you know let me give mm-hmm. you um, some examples you know uh, you know sociologists and anthropologists can help to identify social you know what are the social norms and values as well mm. as cultural practices that sometimes inadvertently help to facilitate the spread of some diseases you know see for mm. example maybe maybe in certain cultures it uh, may be permissible for you know men for example i'm just just hypothetically you know to have right. a multiple female partners you know maybe maybe culturally right. it is possible but that on the other mm-hmm. hand may increase the likelihood of spread of maybe hiv you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for example so it's very important for social scientists uh, to be part of the team along with doctors and you know medical scientists and mm-hmm. you know bio uh, bio scientists to examine what cultural practices may be inadvertently mm-hmm. contribute to the spread of diseases and and most importantly right. how to tweak the public messaging or the awareness campaign accordingly because when you are asking me to do something you know adopt some kind of a health measure that also uh, i will only uh, probably that the chances of my following it is higher mm-hmm. if it does not maybe challenge some of my cultural uh, practices that you know i have inherited so to really mm-hmm. understand why some public health messaging works with some community and it's quite challenging right. for other communities you know i mean how is it that malaysia has now you know ranked by world health organization in the five top nations who have you know dealt with with the uh, coronavirus epidemic now the mm-hmm. the actual the health uh, the challenges to health were facing the whole world how come right. some countries have dealt with it better of course the medical right. health care system yes yeah. but it's yeah. not something within our society and i'll just give, just say one more thing and i'll stop mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. is that if you just see it it has really amazed me uh, mm-hmm. the way that malaysians have celebrated you know their most important religious festivals uh, mm-hmm. during the pandemic mm-hmm. so much of constraint you know mm-hmm. so much of constraint so much of of of, of you know social strength Uh, mm-hmm. within the communities in festival it was and also the other groups of malaysians i have seen is you know created a great social bond by supporting them that you know mm. understand uh, uh, that you 
know, and, and to me, as you know, you can call me like a half Indian, half Malaysian now. <laughs> to me, really, is amazing. I was amazed by the social bond uh, mm. of our Malaysians during this time. And right. a question would be, a question would be, and I was very personally very interested to uh, to find out that mm -hmm. how this social capital, this social bond, you know, if this was one of the factors that allowed mm -hmm. us, in, you know, together with you know. Uh, public health, uh, you know, med medical interventions and all that. But if we have this amazing social capital in this country, how can mm -hmm. we harness this, this right. social capital when we move mm -hmm. into uh, recovery and rebuilding phase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I about to get that as well. I think that's brilliant. So those are the things like uh, I totally agree with you, and I I started to make some connections into uh, when you said that. Uh, we could find out more about the, the practices, uh, the things that we do in our cultures. Why, for example, like the messaging of the you know, during the recovery of uh, COVID and pandemic, for example, there why certain group of people are highly compliant, why that, uh, some uh, did not, right? And I think this is where the area where social scientists could make a significant contribution by understanding the human patterns, uh, human way of decision making, and stuff like yeah. that, right? So, Absolutely. so. Yeah, so in other words, a social scientist does not just confine in the lab, taking numbers, you know, yeah. data, research. Uh, uh, in Malaysia, a uh, term they call shop sendiri, you know. I think <laughs> this is where the contribution is is very important, right? And I like the part where you mentioned where the social scientist could partner with medical practitioners yeah. in understanding the, the so-called unclinical uh, you know, reason of a certain behaviors, yeah. right? I mean, we, we must, uh, human just such a complex uh, being, uh, especially under pressure right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So my next question would be, I mean, I like the part where you mentioned about why uh, social scientists, science also can learn why there are certain movement of politics or causes, right? So if you see now uh, in the last few years globally, there are a lot of youth movement into mm -hmm. uh, so-called against, uh, they call it anti-establishment. They, they don't like corporates, they don't like authorities, they don't like leaders. Uh, I mean, what w what could be the future of this kind of movement look like in the next few years from a uh, social scientist perspective? Um, very tough question, Tyrone. Very, mm -hmm. very tough question, but, but let me, let me, let me uh, try to uh, provide some response uh, mm -hmm. that first of right. all okay yeah. one thing is that the more the things change the more they remain the same so mm -hmm. while humanity has experienced pandemics before many many pandemics before but essential mm -hmm. human nature has remained the same okay mm -hmm. so imagine a person who's caught in a, uh, in a in a light rain coming back from work maybe a light rain uh, mm -hmm. so uh, and then drawn into a storm and then into a hail storm and then into mm -hmm. a flood so what, is mm, yeah. Yeah. so what is the essential human nature is to survive so when mm -hmm. you are in the light rain you take out your umbrella i myself run into the nearest uh, um, 7-eleven and bought an umbrella because i don't have an umbrella with me so you know right. to survive to find a roof find safety and once the storm is over to return to safety family friends work home happiness uh, and, mm. and, and community so no matter how big the disruptions are Mind you, today we are actually in a better situation dealing with the pandemic because of the advancements of technology, and medical science. Mm -hmm. but if you think of pandemics in, you know, in 1600s, you know, the Black Death and all of those, so mm -hmm. that was a very, very long time, a large number of yeah. people died. So our job yeah. is to, if for the future, yeah, like I said, very difficult to imagine the future, but yeah. uh, we have to understand the challenges faced by uh, humanity, how to use cultural knowledge to mm -hmm. innovate, you know, cultural knowledges mm -hmm. that reside within within each community, cultural indigenous knowledges as well as education. So how we are able to build uh, uh, and empower resilient society. So uh, that's right. one. The other mm -hmm. I want to talk about, I do want to touch on what you what you said about younger people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of, of leading change. Yes, I think we, with the, 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 the new generation is a very different type of generation that Mm -hmm. You know, people who were born in, even millennials, you know, born in right, 80s, right. born in 70s, 80s, a very different mm -hmm. type of of, uh, of a society. Today we have, mm -hmm. in Davos, we have, you know, youngsters as young as 15, 16, 17, they are running 
uh, you know, by, by plastic campaign. They are right, like like Greta, for example, right? Yeah. She's right. on the Time cover magazine, okay? She's only yeah, a teen, yeah. teenager, right? And, and we also have people from our part of the world, you know? Right. Uh, um, from our part of the world, in Bali, you know, the 17-year-old mm. youngster, Malati, who's doing great work in Bye Bye Plastic. I remember right. that recently I read in India, uh, mm. because because there was a um, kind of a traffic accident happened near a school and mm. uh, so uh, the children of the school actually stepped out and I don't remember exactly clearly how it happened but I remember I saw videos of school children mm. actually standing in groups uh, mm. near the, the, the traffic light and mm. when the car stopped and traffic light they knock on the on the window they met the uncles and the aunties to roll down their windows and tell them uh, tell them that you know they should be speeding and then you know mm. just some kind of uh, wow. you know. so amazing I yeah I, yeah but i i don't take it so much as anti establishment but perhaps the youth of now is giving us reminders uh, mm. of the things that that are very important but maybe pe- people like me or my generation because we mm. are so caught up with you know day to day issues that right. we tend to forget a lot of things. Mm. You just mm-hmm. see, Carol, if during the pandemic, you ordered food can. You ordered takeaway, yeah. did you? You ordered, right? Yes, I did. I also ordered. So, is there something that caught your attention when you ordered your food? How did it arrive in what type of container? Yeah, yeah, in, uh, I think it was a recyclable, what you call a kota, you know, paper made uh, yeah. containers. Yeah. Some in recycle, some not so recycle. Some no, yeah, uh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. so we also created during this pandemic because we really can't go out and mm. so um, we also be very careful that I, I remember, I, 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 I quite remember that I would gather quite a bit of plastic, single-use plastic. Mm, mm, mm. So yeah. um, mm-hmm. I think, uh, so it's all about younger people really wanting to uh, make a difference to the world, yeah. Uh, to yeah. the planet and uh, giving us a constant reminder of the issues that are really, really important for the right. future of right. the planet. So I think the younger people are thinking more about the future than us. Maybe our generation is more thinking about the present. I don't yeah, know. That yeah. I, to I think, I think I, yeah, I would like to build on that. Sometimes uh, some of the issues that they they brought in, uh, you know, for example, like you know, I remember a few years ago about Occupy Wall Street, where uh-huh. you know, yeah, they did that. They, they think about uh, the... the the current, the present generation, or the the boomer generation, or whoever that's yeah. on, already making it big, but we still want more. And that, I mean, when I look myself in the mirror, it's like, are we, are we that selfish? You know, I mean, yeah. those kind of actions stem from somewhere, and it could be probably their reaction to what we did. I mean, just like you know, uh, Steve Jobs famous of saying, uh, the the best thing about the world when you put one side, the other is poking to there's some reaction to it, right? So this could be. A reaction in the society, what what has been happening around us, and we probably need to really take this into serious considera- consideration. Uh, now, okay, building on that question, uh, Doctor Anin, uh, how could the youth um, uh, take advantage of this knowledge of social science and that is available uh, or courses in available in in Taylor's? Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, I'm really happy uh, to share with you that mm-hmm. in uh, Taylor's University we will be offering, we will be launching two new social science uh, degree programs in March right. uh, next year. We're very excited. It's under the School of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and this will be uh, delivered in work-based learning mode, which I'll just share with you in a minute. But generally, yeah. Kairul, globally, social science is a very popular field of study. However, mm-hmm. in, uh, in the, the skills gained in traditional social science degrees, they are still valued by employers, but it's becoming increasingly mm-hmm. important to have uh, industry experience. Okay, so that's mm-hmm. one. Before students go to work and build professional networks even before they, they graduate. So, mm-hmm. so uh, keeping this in mind, we have deliberately chosen to launch these two programs in the work-based learning node mode mm. and uh, this is popularly in Malaysia is known as uh, you know to you to I uh, so we've adopted the variation of to you to I which is to you one I which means to you means uh, two years in the university and one mm-hmm. year in the, in the industry so in our social science degree students will spend the first two years 
studying at the university and in the final mm. year they'll be attached to our industry partners mm. uh, we believe it will be a very authentic learning environment where they will be mentored like industry leaders kairul i hope you will also support us uh, in will, the will. Up to have you as a coach for our students and uh, mm -hmm. and it's also widely believed that you know after the pandemic people are going to become very selective about what they study where they right. put their money in you know the investments and hope this learning will be in, in high demand and mm. i'm happy to say that a few uh, leading organizations have already come forward to support us like uh, right. the pinang institute tanaganita mm -hmm. project dialogue uh with mm -hmm. e ideas and so on quite a few very very outstanding uh leaders have come right. on board with us uh right. and uh, and it's also very interesting i think social science is who is going to be a key subject that future leaders going to study now look at this a recent study done by british council that mm -hmm. they showed 55% of professional leaders worldwide mm -hmm. study possess a degree in social science and you'll be able wow, to yeah it's great yeah i mean talking talking about that right i mean i like the part that you mentioned that so how could uh, you take advantage of this social social science as a career yeah okay mm. so um i will maybe maybe talk talk to you about two main areas however mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so um uh, again just to go back to the british council study they have predicted that younger leaders are more likely to hold a degree in social sciences and humanities than older leaders so assuming mm. that you know i am a generation belong to the older yeah. leaders so people who will be coming taking up leadership positions uh whether mm. in the industry or whether you know in the in the government or in the non government sector the mm. british council study says they are more likely to have a degree in social science and why because because whether you do business uh, <clears throat> whether you do business or whether you know you do training or whether mm -hmm. uh you are into designing all of it yeah. end of the day you know requires a deep understanding of the society and culture in which all these various businesses thrive you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, again i mean go back to you know advise the world to just twist uh, just just to tweak what i we what we discussed earlier that right. why you know it why why do some certain sections of population buy something and mm -hmm. others others don't you know so a mm -hmm. understanding of who am i talking to in what language i'm i'm talking to you know for example right. carol one of the things that i felt was very important when i moved to malaysia Uh, mm -hmm. When I first moved to Malaysia, I didn't speak Malay, I didn't speak Chinese, I didn't speak Tamil. Oh, really? Yeah, uh -huh. I didn't speak any of these languages. Right. I was speaking English, and uh, and one of the first things I told myself that I should do, and actually love doing it, right. is learning Bahasa Malaysia. And <laughs> uh, I, you know, just picking up right from the first time. I don't actually remember, you know, what was my. First word that I learned right. was right. uh, dilarang merokok. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because that I would yeah. say at UKM, you know, it is a sign word. Dilarang merokok. Yeah. So I say, okay, so it, it mm. basically means don't smoke. Right. So one of the words says means don't, and one of the words says smoke. So right. from that today, and I felt that if I were to have been the life in in Malaysia, I need to mm. learn the language. Mm -hmm. I need to. understand about the culture and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm very happy that I am able to speak in Bahasa Malaysia quite I don't know reasonably You're pretty good today. at it. Uh, yeah. Quite, quite all right. So uh, right. so that basically trying to thrive thrive even in business you need to mm -hmm. understand cultures languages societies people you need to have empathy you know uh, uh, mm -hmm. you need to understand social norms social taboos so So while we have a lot, a whole lot of career options, you know, for example, mm -hmm. uh, let me let me let me just focus on two. One is that mm -hmm. I think the experience of the pandemic has really shown countries mm -hmm. that <clears throat> while in the short term, you know, we close our borders, but in the long run, containing a lethal and deadly virus and maybe some future viruses, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> countries needs to collaborate. to collaborate to deal with this these are these are not mm. asia's problem or indonesia's problem you know this is a global yeah. global issue so we need yeah. very very smart uh, uh 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 people in the area of uh, government and diplomacy uh mm -hmm. in uh, working in international organizations like un mm. ilo and so on because the next mm. era as we step out of this is going to be about understanding and 
cooperation between governments to deal with common challenges so mm -hmm. so government diplomacy international i think international organizations are very exciting jobs uh mm. that that can be had from social sciences yeah and and then you know what that's something that you yourself do faru innovation mm. social innovation right. that mm -hmm. uh, what 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 type, now that let's say a certain number of people have lost their jobs what mm -hmm. what, what can uh, social science uh, students can come up with new ideas innovative ideas uh, right. of, of alternative lively like lively food so they mm. can work in non governmental organizations they can they can be social entrepreneurs you know like uh, yeah. business with uh, a social um, yeah you know, with purpose with social purpose yeah, yeah. You can right. do, and if you don't want to do that you can go into research and innovation i mean like mm -hmm. just now i said that i'm actually really really thinking that you know this study of social capital in malaysia mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. it's huge a uh, huge thing that we should right. study and this should right. be incorporated in our recovery plan you know recovery plan right. there is of right. education there is business and i think almost right. all organization today mm -hmm. they they want people with leadership qualities they want people with That's communication right. skills teamwork yeah. skills the technical part of the job and the talk mm -hmm. uh, when they join the job i'm sure right. what would be the let's say kairu if i were to ask you you are an employer mm -hmm. what would be the first top skills that you're looking for in your graduates something that what i said maybe right definitely i mean yeah? i mean the the hard skill the technical can be taught easily i mean in my kind of business what what one by one they need to have a strong integrity they understand uh, purpose you uh, know in business uh, you understand human relations you know, working with clients and we deal with hr people business yeah. people definitely yeah and what more kind of if that. you were to if these students were to go through the work based learning program mm. then in that final year they would actually have the opportunity to to work in the industry to build the professional yeah. network to be actually known to within right. uh, a circle a uh, right. professional circle and yeah. when they graduate and come come for job uh, yeah. they are already to a, to a reasonable extent they are industry experience right. already right no, and, and also and also experience. network you know and also build yeah. some yeah. networks yeah. along the way right yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. And it's also very good for the industry because you had the time to also, you know, to to work with these students for one year. Mm -hmm. So you also will able to tap their strengths, and you also yeah. contribute to them to develop their own skills, their own right. knowledge, and basically to bridge what they've studied in the university and connect it to the real life world yeah. Yeah. experience. You know, that's right. So, that's right. Uh, and I think it's very gainful for the industry as well because you've had the time Definitely. to. Definitely. see them for one whole year and yeah. if you wish and if you have a vacancy you could hire them or you could if you didn't have uh, a vacancy you could recommend them to someone and you could recommend yes. them knowing what their strengths are that's right that's right no i i really like this uh, structure that you have the work based learning i look forward uh, for that you know you launch it in 2021 and definitely it is going to be a game changer not just for the students even also for the employer Uh, particularly on the model that you say you know the two 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 y two i uh, structure you know i think there's something to do update me on uh, you know and i'm i'm glad that audience are able to listen to you directly also this is uh, dr anindita head of school of social science and liberal arts in taylor university right i took i mean so much of the time it's more than 10 minutes now final words dr anin to all the aspiring youth Who wanted to make change, please. Yes, yes. I would say that um, this is really your time. This is really your time. The world needs you. Um, I, while I'm not saying that you must study social sciences, but social sciences will give you that, you know, that empathy, the ability mm -hmm. to understand societies and communities, and whatever work that you do, um, mm -hmm. you 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 will be able to do because social sciences is 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 so broad. and even right. if you are studying some other subjects and that is very important you know let me not deny that we do need doctors you know we need technical experts we we yeah. need all of that but in taylor's university we if, if a student in taylor's university is also able to you know if you are studying say business you can minor in psychology you can minor in education mm. so and even if you are if you are studying anywhere else maybe that's a good way of uh, combining uh, uh, a major with another minor and i would mm. say finally i would say that do not be afraid 
because this is the time for change and you have to lead the change because the future is yours you will live another 40 yeah. years from now not me so yeah. step up stand up for you for you believe in find mentors mentors are very important you find your own right. mentors you know and yeah. and and give it your best no idea is too small even if you start mm. with uh, you know clearing the you know a small project like clearing the roads in your residential area starting from that you know planting mm. tree no idea mm. is too small i remember that one of the very um, successful uh, business uh, endeavors that started in india uh, uh-huh. it's, a, it's it's a brand called uh, lijat papar it's you know papar mm. and it had a very small uh, beginning with a group of women uh, starting a cooperative and wanting to uh, sell make their own homemade papram and sell it and it's one of mm. the top papar brands in the country now wow wow yeah. amazing right? i mean all because they they believe in what you said no yes. ideas are too small and they take action on it right this because is because if you don't start small how are you going to make it big mm. right you know? Why you want to make right. it big? You got to start somewhere. Right. But I think there comes a lot of hesitation. You know, is this is this gonna work? You know, is this idea too small? Is it meaningful? Yeah. No, don't worry. If it is meaningful for you, it mm. is meaningful for the world. Because you must right. have that passion. You must have that passion. Right. The passion for however you may think in the you know in the order of big things is small. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. go for it and make it big because it's your passion. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor Anin. Thank you so much uh, for your time, your sharing. I think a lot of audience are beginning to see a, a, a what we call a greater understanding what is social science, and definitely, I mean, you answer why the big why why the world needs social science, yeah. So with that, thank you so much, Doctor Anin. Stay inspiring. I uh, give you a, a big uh, applause from here. All right, all right. Thank you so much. All right. Lovely question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Take care. See you again. Bye. Bye. Right. Bye. So that that is uh, Doctor Anin uh, from Taylor's University on why the world needs social science. I mean, truthfully, before we have uh, this ice chat, I I have very little understanding what is social science, and now with this sharing, I am beginning to understand a little bit more what it is. And I really like the part where she mentioned about uh, there is so much the youth can learn about. Taking the qualities, uh, learning from social science to be able to build empathy, shows more leadership, do things with purpose, full join the social entrepreneurship, or start something. No ideas uh, is too small. You can always do something today. And a lot of stories that uh, Dr. Anin shared just now, fully inspiring. And tell us, so happened to going to launch two new program on social science using work-based learning. Two year in university, two year in industry, and industry could also hire some of the students for one year attachment, right? So that's really great where you can learn about the students' capability, and 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 up you could hire them as one of your staff later on. So with that, thank you so much. This is Ice Chat, innovation, change, and entrepreneurship. So this Friday we're going to have another one for as our speaker going to be interesting as well. Uh, this time around is on career planning. This is a guy called Kalik Putra, career service specialist uh, for graduate executives. So if the to- topic is what does it take to get hired in one to three months? Unique tips and relevant things. So stay tuned on this Friday at 4 p.m. to 4:20. If you want to get hired, the new tips, tricks, and trips on the resumes, on what to say, what to do, join us on this friday with that thank you so much once again stay inspiring stay healthy us chat helping someone get back on their feet is good economics stay inspiring help them bye bye